Pokemon, pocket monsters, we all love them from classics like Pikachu, Eevee, Charmander, Mudkip to newer Pokemon like Super Smash Bros. Greninja. Pokemon has a fond place in the hearts of many children around the world. Oh, hey, what's up, Joe? Yo, what's up? You started the segment already with that? I mean, yeah. Uh, okay, all right. But all right, so today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Pokemon origins on one kid's childhood that changed ours and impacted all of ours. And this is what you're going to learn in today's Import Legacy. We start with Satoshi Tajiri. As a child, Tajiri loved insects and tadpoles, a common sight at his suburban Tokyo home. Did you know that Shigeru Miyamoto, the creator of Mario, also he created Mario, Legend of Zelda, and he also created Legend of Zelda to pay homage to when he was a kid walking around in caves in the forest. Oh, shiznit. Definitely. Miyamoto must have seen a lot of his younger self in Tajiri because he was responsible for introducing Tajiri and Pokemon to Nintendo. Let's go back a few years first. Tajiri as an adult formed Game Freak and a design studio called Creatures alongside artist Ken Sujimori who illustrated the original Pokemon games. Tajiri loved the possibilities of Nintendo's Game Boy system at the time and he pictured little monsters traveling along the wire. Weirdly enough, he was inspired by Ultraman fantasy TV show called Ultra 7 and a fantasy TV show that revolved around the protagonist using giant monsters contained within small capsules. Miyamoto pushed Nintendo to fund the project. But production was not easy. During the six year production time, Pokemon nearly drove Game Freak into bankruptcy. But it was totally worth it because when Pokemon Red and Green was released, it blew up in Japan. Pokemon Mania was everywhere. Trading cards, a manga adaptation, the iconic anime. Now all that was left for Nintendo was to release the game overseas. And the results was instant hit. Officials are finding that Pokemon cards are responsible for fist fights, and the constant trading is not only distracting kids from classwork, but turning the playground into a black market. In terms of games, the next entry in the franchise was Yellow. Given the popularity of the anime, Yellow allowed players to play as Ash and follow the events of the anime. Following Yellow, Gold and Silver introduced the Johto region and an entirely new continent with 100 new Pokemon. The features introduced in this game went on to become some Pokemon staples. Not one for disappointing fans, but Nintendo also recreated Red and Green for the GBA as a Fire Red and Leaf Green. It was around this time that Nintendo twisted the Pokemon's formula with Pokemon Ranger, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, and hardcore gamers, as well as Pokemon fans considered the Mystery Dungeon series, not only were these spin off of the main game, but some of the best video games ever made. It was around 2006, Pokemon's 10 year anniversary, that the franchise no longer needed to prove itself. Diamond and Pearl, Black and White, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Platinum, X and Y, Sun and Moon were all top quality games. In fact, every single mainline game is in the top selling best games list of all time. Are you forgetting something? Uh, I don't think so. I covered a lot of Pokemon content already. There was Pokemon Conquest, a Fire Emblem like spin off. The anime is still going strong. Oh, and Sword and Shield will be the first mainline entry for a Nintendo console rather than a handheld. I wonder what else I'm getting at. Pokemon Go? Oh, I'm so dumb. All right. <laughs> the game, as many of us remember, was a huge hit. That summer that it came out, everyone was talking about playing Pokemon Go, for better or for worse. Pokemania was huge. Companies got people into their stores using the Pokestop feature. Gyms were crowded with people. Actual criminals were caught. Memorials were desecrated by gamers. Injuries were had. Friendships were made. People actually started to go to church again? What's that about? Nintendo had a ton of merchandise money thanks to the increased interest in Pokemon. And of course, celebrities and politicians had to get involved. You know who created Pokemon Go? But I'm trying to figure out how we get them to have Pokemon go to the polls. Do you think there'll ever be another game as popular as Pokemon Go? I don't know, Jill. It's hard to say. Hmm. Okay. It's lunchtime. Do you know what that means? What does it mean? It's Pokemon time! Ah! Is that a Charmander? <laughs> <laughs> 